the virgin birth, listen, the virgin birth is an essential doctrine of Christianity. What do I mean by that? I mean, it must be true for Jesus to be our savior. If Jesus was not born of a virgin, Jesus cannot be our savior. He cannot save us from our sins. If he is not virgin born, we are all still dead in our trespasses and sins and without hope. It is essential for salvation. Why must the virgin birth be true? Well, Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 12, it tells us that sin entered the world through the first man, Adam, and death through his sin. And then it goes on to tell us that the sin nature of Adam was passed to all human beings. So all human beings die because all human beings sin. The supernatural virgin birth of Jesus Christ, it broke the chain of sin that was passed from Adam to all people. Because of his virgin birth, Jesus did not inherit the sin nature of Adam. Jesus was without sin or even the desire for sin. He had no sin nature at all. Jesus was not merely moral or good or had some kind of really heightened level of self-control. The Bible says he was sinless. He didn't have the sin nature. He, he was perfect. And because he was sinless, he can represent us before a holy God. If Jesus were not born of a virgin, then he inherited the same sin nature that you and I have. And that means he's a sinner just like you and me. And a sinner can't save a sinner. A sinner can't save a sinner. He was born of a virgin so that he is without sin. He breaks that chain from Adam that passes to all mankind. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says that Jesus was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. 1 John 3 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. In him there is no sin. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. For God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. For God made him who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. And he became sin for us. He took all of our sin upon himself and he became our sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ is the only way to account for the sinless life of Jesus that he lived. The greatest evidence of the virgin birth and his deity is his life. The perfect life that he lived. You know, someone can claim to be born of a virgin. You can make that claim. I can make that claim. Anyone could claim to be born of a virgin. Well, let's see their perfect sinless life. That, that shows that they didn't inherit the sin nature of Adam. Jesus is the only sinless one. Now, look at the end of verse 23. It says, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is God with us. Jesus was, this is what the Bible teaches, Jesus was fully God and fully man. He was God in the flesh. He was more than human, more than just a moral person or a good teacher. He was God incarnate. Emmanuel, God with us. The deity of Jesus Christ is also an essential doctrine of Christianity. Jesus must be God to be our savior. If he's not God, he's not our savior. He can't save us. Why? The Bible says our sins separate us from God. And there's nothing that we can do to bridge that separation between us and God. If Jesus is only a man and not God, he can't bridge that separation any more than you can. 
or I can. The only way we can be reconciled to God is for God to build a bridge across that gap of separation. For God to come down to us. We can't go up to God through our works or our good deeds or our morality. The only way is for God to come down to us. And that's exactly what God did. God became a man in Jesus Christ to bridge the divide between us and God. Second Corinthians 5.19 says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now look at verse 23 or 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife. So, so Joseph immediately obeyed the Lord and stayed in this marriage to Mary, continued with the betrothal and then the marriage ceremony. And then verse 25, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So Joseph restrained himself sexually until after Mary gave birth to notice her firstborn son. Mary did not remain a virgin. Jesus was not her only son. Uh, The Gospels list uh, uh, four sons by name and at least two daughters born to Joseph and Mary after the birth of Jesus. Uh, The New Testament books of James and Jude were penned by the half-brothers of Jesus that were born to Joseph and Mary. So this this short little passage here, (laughs) that's at the end of chapter uh, 1, has some pretty important doctrinal truths. Jesus is God in the flesh. He's come down from heaven. He's born of a virgin to save his people from their sins. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. God is always with us. And in every situation, every circumstance, God is always with us, no matter what we may go through. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's Emmanuel. 